what kind of injury updates do you have on on uh, Mike, Jack, and Steven as a, uh, you know, uh, with their possible availability this week? Yeah, just uh, same as same as last week. Guys working through trying to get them ready. Um, don't know for sure yet on uh, on uh, Michael and Jack, but uh, um, just working, trying to been throwing, getting better, seeing progress. But uh, we'll have to see. We'll make a decision tomorrow. Yeah, it's been uh, been good. You know, guys are working hard, and obviously, just trying to work through everything and and uh, continuing to to motivate them and and to motivate each other and and uh, to work to come together to finish. You know, it's a, a special day for for the seniors, uh, recognizing these guys have come here and done so much for our program. So I uh, just want to make sure that they uh, this team finishes well. And uh, yeah, it was a, a good solid week. Just uh, got to continue. We got more things to do here before before kickoff on Saturday. All right, now we'll go to Tom Tom, what, uh, what are some of the things you're going to miss the most about some of the people in this senior class? Oh, gosh, I man, just a lot of uh, a lot of quality young men, without question. A lot of really good players and, and just guys that, you know, special to me because they, they came here um, and they believed in what we could build uh, before it happened on the field. And, and really got a chance to, you know, recruit these guys and help develop them and help be a part of their lives, you know. So I think you just miss the relationships, you, the, the daily contact with them, uh, being around them. Uh, just a lot of really, uh, like I said, high-quality guys that uh, uh, I've poured my heart into and they poured their heart into this program. So it's pretty special, but uh, that's what we're going to enjoy every, every step of these last few times together here and make sure that we don't take any of this for granted. Mike, Mike and Zach. Yeah, Coach, you've, you've built your reputation as being a guy that comes in and turns around programs. I'm, I'm curious, just along that journey, if you've ever had a season quite like this one. And, um, you know, I know you like to consult with others and, and read and, and do things like that. I'm, I'm curious if you've given any thought or maybe already have started to do that, kind of who you're turning to, or is that more of an after-the-season type of thing? Uh, it'll be an after the season thing, uh, but yeah. To answer your first question, no, I've never, I've never been a part of anything like this, uh, unprecedented for me, um, which uh, you know makes it even harder. But at the same time, you know, we're just trying to, to hang together and and uh, stay positive and and. Uh, get as many guys healthy as we can each week you know I've just it's an unprecedented number of guys that we've lost and and, uh, and then the way the season has turned out especially with the expectations yeah I've never never experienced anything like it Zach and Keegan I guess kind of talking about things that um, Tom might might wait a little bit for the offseason but but just sort of conceptually at least we've asked you about the guys that might have the extra year and mm -hmm. and basically sort of working through that process I mean from your side of the table, I guess, how, how, how do you think you'll approach that? Maybe, number one, obviously, maybe trying to figure out is the extra year something that everybody is going to get? Is every, you know, it's kind of on the table for everybody. And number two, just basically sort of working through, not even just with NFL guys, but guys who might have the opportunity just to move on and kind of start mm -hmm. life after football. Sure. What's that conversation like from your side of the table, I guess? Yeah, it's a, an interesting dynamic for sure <clears throat> because you have several different uh, – Types of you know, there's a lot of different situations involved as you kind of address some of those, and uh, because here's the reality: if we if we grant everybody their COVID year, uh, we wouldn't be able to bring in any high school players, you know, with a whole class. So it's not that's not realistic. No one in the country is going to do that, and so you have to have you have to make those decisions about who's going to be in these spots. Whether you keep a guy for an extra year, or do you go out and, and, and get a high school player or somebody else that's going to fill that position? So you know, we've already had some of those conversations for for situations that we feel like we know uh, more about at this point. Uh, guys making decisions about their pro career that have a year left, uh, that will take some time. Uh, we got a whole process we go through with that, uh, and that will begin you know, as soon as the season is over. And uh, do, it's really involving a lot of information uh, gathering, meetings, opportunities for them to get as much information as they possibly can to make those decisions. And, and so, and then there's guys that are kind of somewhere in between those there where you're trying to figure out you know, situations and numbers Numbers and and guys, so it's uh, a lot of conversations will happen uh, post uh, our last game, and uh, but then you do that as you're trying to go out and, and recruit. During
during the contact period, which is a very, very important period for us for, for the early signing in December 15th. So a lot going on for sure. But uh, so from our, our perspective, my perspective, it's really it's, it's roster management at a level that we've never seen before of being able to go through and, and make a lot of decisions. And, and, and sometimes you're working on information you don't know the complete picture of yet. So it's about taking the information you have right now and making the best decisions possible, but very, being very open and honest with our guys uh, about where they stand. Yeah, Coach, with trying to salvage what's left of the season, trying to finish 4-8, and eight, have you installed at all kind of a nothing-to-lose, low-pressure attitude among your guys, or is it the same approach as every week? Well, it's a, it's a so, similar approach regards to, hey, this is the biggest game of the season because it's the next game. You know, this week is going to be uh, is our senior day, and uh, that makes it very, very special. That's kind of been the focus for this week to be able to play as hard as we possibly can for these seniors and, and to give them a win on senior day would be very, very special. So that's been the focus for this week, and then obviously then we'll take the next one as it comes, and, and the focus will we'll turn to that one and the things that that entails specifically. So... Uh, but I also I understand your point. You know, there's uh, you know, hey, it's, there's uh, a lot to be gained here, and and uh, um, you just let it rip. You know, you don't want to you don't want to definitely be conservative or cautious or anything in those regards. And not that you ever want to be too much in those situations. But I know I know what you're asking. But I, I just feel like yeah, you just got to go out there and play and and play our best, play hard, play physical. Don't hold anything back in in, in regards to what we call or what we do or how we prepare and and how hard we play. So I just want to make sure our guys finish and and play their absolute tails off for each other on. Saturday. Matt, Matt. Hey, Coach, how you doing? I'm good, Matt. How are you, buddy? I'm okay. Um, obviously, you didn't have you didn't have Cam Jones last week. How's how's he doing? And how's he looked on the on the practice field this week? Yeah, he uh, fortunately is is feeling a whole lot better, and uh, he he was really really sick, and so uh, just thankful that he's back and has been able to practice every single day, and I expect him to be 100. percent Right. Thanks, Tom. Awesome. Have a great day, Elio.